Hello everyone, my name is Edson. I am one of the students of the OSMCS at Georgia Tech. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about my experience in the Advanced Operating System course. I took this class in fall 2021. Pretty much, I will talk about what I learned in that class, how difficult the class was, how many projects did I have to do in the class, what were the project about, how many exams I had to take, what did I like the most about the class, and what I have hated the most about the class. And finally, I will wrap up by giving a conclusion. If that is what you're here for, continue watching this video. Otherwise, now would be a good time to look for another video that I have on my channel. So what did I learn on that class? The class is divided into four or five big topics. The first topic, we started on learning about operating system structure. This would be way operating system organized. So the three main structure we studied is the monolithic structure. That would be regular Linux or Mac OS, where everything is written as a big binary, I would say, and that binary communicate directly to the underlying hardware. The other type of operating system structure we studied is the microkernel structure. Uh, the, my best experience with that operating system would be Minix. So pretty much the operating system would be very, very small. It would only take care of uh, inter-process communication and very limited support. However, all of the other pieces would be within at the user space level. This would be file system and all of the other pieces. And the last type of operating system structure we talked about was exokernel. I have not had any professional experience with those type of operating system. They seems to be mostly used in academic setting to test certain theory. Unless you like some PhD student, I have not had any real world experience with it. After that, the second portion of the class, we spend a lot of time learning about synchronization, communication, and scheduling in parallel system. This would be the code behind threading libraries. So one of the projects we had to do was to write a something called a barrier synchronization. Pretty much if you have a system with multiple thread, you usually do something like thread that drain in C++, pretty much your program would wait when all the thread finish before the main thread continue. So we had to implement different version of this thread that drain. And also we talked about synchronization between processes. We use synchronization uh, API such as MPI or OpenMP. Those facilitate threadings or process to synchronize. Uh, the third big portion of the class, we spent a lot of time talking about distributed system and the communication mechanism, distributed object and middleware. Pretty much we did a lot of study in RPC and we get to implement and service, we get to implement services with gRPC protocol. This was one of the projects we had to do. Actually, the last two projects of the class had a lot of hands-on experience with gRPC. And the last two big portion of the class was for failure and recovery management. This is pretty much touching the piece. Like if you have, a, 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 how do you save your job in a system that can fail at any time and still be able to start back again without losing data? So we learn about the different type of way you can implement a system to do that by using undo log and all these things. In the last portion of the class, we study support for internet scale computing. We studied different distributed system and one of the one that I remember on top of my head is content delivery network. We investigate different algorithm and different version and we spend a lot of time talking about if you let's say you have a paid content delivery network how they work internally 
And the piece that I liked the most on this part was where they explain how would you implement LimeWire or Parent B, right? Where you have a file that is in a distributed network and you want to share that file with multiple users without flooding them with internet requests. Beside all of this learning, we have to do a lot of reading. This class emphasis uh, on us doing graduate level reading. We had to read multiple papers. Uh, I, the one thing I had issues, I couldn't find time to read all of the papers that was assigned because it was very much a lot. Most of the classes, the teacher explaining just paper. So the teacher's explanation could be a good help in reading just paper. Also in the class, each student had to summarize two of those paper. So we had the list and each student has to pick two of the list. I think it was a total about 10 or 12 papers. And for each paper, only 10 students can sign up for it. So this was really good so that if you don't have the time to sit down and read the entire paper, you can just read the student's summary of that specific paper. We also have a weekly meeting with the teacher where he goes and sit and explain the paper and have questions that we, he can answer live. So now let's talk about a little bit about the project for this class. We had four big projects and each project are very time consuming. I cannot emphasize enough that starting the project way before is going to be really helpful. Usually we have between three weeks and a month to complete a project from end to finish. I'm going to give you a little primer of the each project. So the first project was to write a virtual machine manager whose job is to either add or remove memory to other virtual machine or to reassign the virtual CPU into physical CPU. So pretty much you have a virtual machine manager that manage all of the other virtual machine. So that piece of software would look what which one of those virtual machine has memory pressure. And then depending on that, it's going to assign it or give it more memory. Or it can, can take out memory if another virtual machine is not being utilized. And also the second part of that first project, we had to rebalance CPU utilization depending on which of the virtual machine is using more CPU or not. The second project, which was a big project too, we had to write various various synchronization algorithm and after we finished writing those various synchronization algorithm we had to measure the performance and write a paper explaining the result of their performance the algorithms are provided to us it's part of the research paper that we had to read where they have the pseudocode of the algorithm our job is to implement them in c the third project was us writing a microservice that used the gRPC protocol. This seems like something you would actually do in your day-to-day -day job if you're working as a software engineer where you have to write microservices. So in this project we had to simulate a store where a client would send a request to a server and that server would send request to a or a bunch of other servers to pick up the price for a specific item. And then the main server would reply back with the aggregated price that is found within all the other servers. The last project, the big one, we had to implement a map reduce framework based on the Google white paper. So we had to use gRPC again to help with the communication between the main worker and the other uh, in the other thread uh, so pretty much map reduce is one of these big data framework that hadoop has but all of these implementation are based on google white paper so the white paper would talk about the pseudocode how to implement it and our job was for us to go ahead and implement it in c we were given the skeleton and we just have to implement the method to facilitate the framework. So now let's talk about the exam. In that class, we had to take three exams. 
the first one was the most difficult one. It covered a lot of material. In this one, it covers a lot of things related to operated, operating system structure, where you have microkernel, microkernel, and, and exokernel, and a lot of uh, virtual machine uh, and virtualization. This one was the most difficult. The second exam was not that bad, uh, and the third exam was the easiest. For each exam, we were given the exam uh, the Friday night, where we already didn't know upfront what question is going to be the exam. And by Monday morning, we have to take the exam, uh, I think, before 11 p.m. on Monday. We usually have a shared Google Doc where students will share the solution on that Google Doc. Uh, but the TA or the professor would not tell you if the solution that the student come up with the Google Doc are correct or incorrect. And during the exam, we're not allowed to bring uh, any outside notes. So you have to kind of memorize the solution or you just have to research it and watch the video. I think it's a very good way to do it like that because we are so much crush in time during the semester and with all of the content, it removes the stress that we have to do to prepare for exam. Okay, let's talk about the thing that I like the most about that class. I like the fact that we use gRPC for the last two projects because these are skills that we actually use in our day-to-day -day if we get to work at a software engineer. In gRPC, if you're not familiar with it, it's pretty much when you're sending requests from one server to another one, instead of having the data as text, you have the data written as binary. And it happened that including the data as binary, the result that you get is a smaller data that you have to send on the network. So at the end of the day, you end up saving bandwidth and the amount of communication. And also it's become faster because you have to transmit less data. Even though at the server, you have to de decrypt the data back into the regular text. Uh, after the class also, I had a deeper understanding of inter-process communication and, and barrier synchronization and threading and process. And also I was exposed to API that can help with multi-threaded programming, including OpenMP and MPI. The last thing that I like the most is the increase in vocabulary that I got because I had to read so much. I was exposed to different concepts that it really helped me express myself because now I know exactly what I'm talking about because I've, I've heard them, them, these terms so many times that it is very helpful. Now let's talk about the part that I didn't like about the class. First, I didn't like the fact that most of our projects are written in C and C++. Uh, I know it's an operating system course and most of the operating systems are written in C and C++, but the last two parts of the project, which include gRPC, could have been done in a more recent language, for example, Golang programming language would have been a better better programming language to use because most of us don't use C++. So at least my experience, I haven't been writing C++ professionally. A lot of jobs where you have to be backend developers, most of them don't require C++ unless you want to embedded system and stuff like that. The second thing I didn't like about the class is the fact that I didn't have enough time to read all of the paper and enough time to prepare for the exam. The reason behind it is because we are, the projects are very difficult. And sometimes you have to sacrifice 20 or 30 hours per week to work on the project. And when you take on top of the, that, that you have to watch the videos, you end up not having enough time to sit down and have a deep reading of the papers. The other thing I didn't like about the class, it's too academic. A lot of concept that is explained in the class make sense in an academic setting, but they don't necessarily translate in real world software engineering. Uh, a lot of this concept uh, might be things that other PhD people are exploring, but usually the, the, the real, real software engineer people would not explore this option. So we've seen a lot of those things in like net paper that we read about computer networking, things that could actually improve computer networking, 
but getting the people who implement the will thing like Cisco to implement these, uh, it's not going to happen. So we did a lot of academic thing that didn't translate in real world. And the last thing is the class is difficult. It requires a lot of time commitment. For example, for project two, where I had to not only finish coding, I had to take measurement and then I had to write a research paper. And this was too much. Uh, yeah, this was too much because I was in vacation and I couldn't enjoy the vacation because I had to write those research paper. So that's, those are the thing that really didn't like about the class. So now the last question, should you take that class? The answer is, it depends on your internal goal and motivation. There are a lot of easier class and if you're not really motivated into taking hard classes, I would suggest you to stay away from that class. Uh, before taking that class, you should make sure that you have a very good grasp of the fundamentals. Uh, this class is a lot more toward academic, so that's mean even if you're really good in your day-to-day -day job as a software engineer, it doesn't necessarily translate that you're going to perform well in this class, because a lot of the concept or things that are very academic. So taking a good review of operating system, computer networking, and data structure and algorithm would really be helpful in this class. Uh, this class also is a very good preparation if you plan to do a distributed system course, which is something that I would be taking next semester. So for me, I feel it's a really good foundation to jump into that class distributed system with the background of the things that I have learned in, in advanced operating system. There is another class that I heard a lot of people talking about, which is called Issues in Cloud Computing that is offered. Uh, that class would also be a good preparation. But again, as I said, there are a lot of easier classes. And if you're not willing to put in the time and effort needed for this class, uh, I would suggest you to take an easier class. Uh, and I would not recommend someone to jump into that class for their first class in the OSNCS program. Mostly because, uh, mostly because it's very difficult. It's very difficult. That's pretty much it from today. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can drop those questions for me and I'll definitely answer them. I hope I gave you value by talking about my experience in that class. That's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.